Welcome back to the great outdoors, everybody. It is the day before archery season opens here in Texas. I've been scouting. Right now I'm sitting on this hay bale here, uh, just taking some practice shots for the day. I'm sitting at 12 yards from a coffee cup. A coffee cup is something I've had on my mind as I'm shooting. Uh, I just found it on the ground, but it's been a nice little mental tool for me to practice my traditional archery, really primitive archery. There's no rest on the bow that I've built here. There's really nothing to this bow. I mean, it's just a simple flat bow. There's no uh, recurved or uh, reflex or anything on it. It's about as, uh, as basic as it gets. I'm gonna take a couple practice shots here, and then I'm gonna take you guys in the ATV to where this whole traditional archery, primitive archery journey began for me. This is decoupage, and it may just look like rocks, but it's a piece of history. It's a look into the past. I've been on this deer lease for around three years. It's an awesome place. It's in the middle of Texas, you know, full of deer. It's got a lot of hogs, it has some turkeys, but really the spark of this place is what we call the lookout. And it's a cliff that looks over the Colorado River, which runs through the middle of Texas. And it's almost impossible to go to this spot, look out, and not imagine how the land was years ago and how the water cut through the middle of this part of the state and created this big wall. And for me, it was hard not to imagine how many other people have looked at this view before. And when you go to the cliffs and you start to look around, if you look closely, you will start to see these little bits of flint that are laid all over the ground and their spots that they're piled up sparks your brain to wonder why is that? Why is there this much decoupage all over the place right here? And the simple answer is it's because the Indians put it there. I got to thinking, well, why would this be here? Why would they put this here? Was this a resource? And as I asked my other friends at deer camp, they told me a little bit of history about the place. And they told me about a book. When I read The Empire of the Summer Moon, that is what transformed the way I thought about archery and Native Americans. And one of the big takeaways from the book for me was the use of the bow and how the Comanche Indians went from a uh, low tier, you know, low level tribe in the Americas to dominating because of the horse and the bow. The way that they used their bows and how they shot their bows was incredible. And to hear stories of just a few hundred years ago of uh, settlers, you know, people trying to pioneer the West being dominated by the Comanche Indians, slaughtered. Uh, it blows your mind. You think, how could they do that? Pioneers had uh, guns. What kind of bows were these? How were they made? That led me to get another book of Native Americans and bows. And then eventually that led me to purchase the Bowyer's Bible, which is uh, a series of books that takes you from literally a tree to a finished crafted uh, fully decorated bow. But when I actually started to craft my first bow, that's when I really gained the respect for original bow makers and how incredibly hard it is to make the bow and then shoot it correctly uh, and just become proficient at it. It's nothing more than just practice. Practice, 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 feel, feel, feel. And you just have to become one with these bows. And every time I make a new bow or I go shoot a bow that I have, I realize the Fred Bear quote, archery is an endless endeavor. You're always trying to reenact that perfect shot where you hit the bullseye. And it is so difficult, but it is addictive where you just wanna do it more and more. And along the way, it has made my, my shoulders, arms, and my mind my muscle memory just way better. And now when I pick up my compound bow, I shoot even better because I'm using all those principles that come from traditional archery now 
that I never learned and I never started with. It's like starting out with a high powered scope on a rifle and then trying to go to an open site. So I may not even get a deer on this trip. It could be years before I get my first animal with the traditional bow, but I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it until I satisfy that thought that has been in my head for over a year now of could I do this? Could I even make a bow? And now I see the light at the end of the tunnel that I've gotten good enough that I think I have a chance to get a deer. I'd be kidding myself if I wasn't thinking about maybe making a bad shot. I don't want to think about that, but the chances are so high. So the animal could get away and I'll have to deal with that regret and relive that shot. It goes really deep. So this is the backstory of my archery journey. It will continue for a lifetime. And hopefully I'm gonna take this stick and send an arrow right through the heart and lungs of an animal. All right, y'all, big time decision right now. Where do we go? Do we go where I've seen multiple does coming in? Close, Stephanie shot a deer last year, a lot of dark, great cover, or do we go where the buck is? We're going where that buck is. So I took the small blind down, I put in the big blind, and I moved it by the feeder. We're talking invasively close. We are definitely gonna have a scent wall coming out, um, but we're just gonna have to cover up as much as we can. I'm not even gonna go out tonight. I'm not gonna scout. I don't wanna put any more scent out there. I'm 75% confident in my shooting at this point is like every time I go out and I shoot myself bows, I'm learning. I'm still teaching myself. I'm teaching my body. I'm teaching, uh, I'm trying to build that muscle memory. Still, after, you know, I've been shooting these things for seven months, I think. We're going to need a little luck. That's enough jabbering. I think I'm nervous talking. Uh, let's cook up some protein and let's go sit in the morning for opening day. Come on, baby. It's peaceful. It's beautiful out here. It's cooling down. And hopefully that chilly weather is gonna bring them in in the morning.
obviously need a lot more training. Even though we don't have any antlers in our hands right now, that was one of the coolest hunts of my life. Just being that close to that deer, it was amazing. I mean, anything that I did movement-wise, it was, it was huge. Everything had to be so incremental. And the, the first shot that I missed, I couldn't even get the camera in position. I was trying to put you guys behind me, and that wasn't working. Deer kept looking up, and it was in a spot where my elbow was hitting the camera so I put it off to the side and then you guys couldn't see the deer I'm standing <laughs> the deer at one point was 10 yards and I was like oh my gosh I need to just take the shot so I put the camera over by that time it was already back to 12 but close enough close enough I was amazed at the at the ducking um, even though those these bows are so quiet um, and, and this bow is about 45 pounds. It's plenty of, I think, penetration power. Really curious to find out. But the deer ducked, ran off. I cannot believe it came back. I mean, it came back within minutes. He sat at 20 yards forever, and I was like, oh, it's just too far. I can't take that shot. Obviously, I just missed it 12. And then finally, he came back. He came back, and his, his head was, like, behind the fence. I was like, this is perfect. You know, he's, he's head down in the corn, not paying attention. And I, I have no idea guys. I mean, I just saw the arrow fly off into the sky, ricochet into the sky. I was able to recover one arrow. We'll have to resharpen the broadhead, but this is, this is odd to say, but I have a sense of relief after that hunt. Um, and really after that second shot it was it was there was a disappointing you know 30 seconds when uh that deer took off and then i started to see it come back and that gave me a sense of hope again but then after i missed the second time it was just like okay i need more practice i need more training at this uh and and it is a big question that's been on my mind for you know, over six months. <clears throat> I'm not getting choked up, I promise. Over six months that I've been thinking about, can I build a bow good enough to do this? Uh, and then can I shoot the bow accurately enough to do this? And then running through the situation in my head, this is how it's going to go, you know, practice, 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 practice. It reminded me of the first time I went deer hunting with my compound bow like I didn't know how to sight it in I didn't know I didn't know what to do really I just went and got one and tried it for the first time and I I missed terribly I mean I missed like 10 feet over the deer's back and then my second shot my second attempt at a deer I shot it in the neck that was my first bow um bow deer was shooting it right in the neck completely miss uh, all the vitals although the neck's pretty vital jugular so i got the deer but that that showed me man i need so much practice like this is so much harder and the traditional bows just take it to a whole nother level guys so although i can probably hit that coffee cup you know a couple times out of five six arrows uh, I need to be where I can hit that coffee cup every time and feel confident about it and not be guessing. And uh, even though I shot right before I went out this morning and I hit the coffee cup one time, the other shots were pretty close, felt good about it, confidence was good. When you get there and you're 12 yards from a deer and you can hear it breathing and then you're trying to pull the bow back and... It, I don't know. Everything just goes out the window and you, you rely on the muscle memory. And I probably did.
didn't do the things that I've been training, I, I don't really know. Like, it's just kind of lost in that moment. And there is nothing that I have found in, in the outdoors that is more exciting than being close to a white-tailed deer with a bow. I mean, 100%, I have, you know, caught bass over 10 pounds. I've seen elk in the woods. Like, that's super exciting, but there's something about being super close to a white-tailed deer with your bow that uh, it just does it for me it just does so like i said earlier <clears throat> this right here is a lifetime endeavor archery is a lifetime endeavor uh i'm glad i didn't wound the animal i'll say that uh will i take this out again that is the big question that deer is going to be hanging around i mean he's going to be here tonight He's probably going to be there tomorrow morning. Like, he's on camera. I've seen this deer around. So, do I try to reattempt this? Just practice all day? Go out? Or do I pick up the compound? Like, that's, that's the big question right there. But even if I don't accomplish the goal of getting a deer with my bow that I made myself, this year, I promise you, it is going to be on the list every year until I do it. It's just one of those things. And when I'm ready, I mean, I'll feel it. I'll, I'll feel ready. But right now, it's like it'd be amazing if it happened, but I'm not 100% confident. And I think you need that confidence for sure. So I'm gonna leave this video to marinate right here, guys. And I'm gonna do some thinking. Uh, big decision to make, I'll probably shoot 200 arrows by the end of the day and try to work some things out uh, may end up taking the compound I don't know but uh, just got this deer that he's a great management deer I wanted to get him last year He'd be a great one to start the season off with the archery uh, get some meat in the freezer so uh, we're gonna stay stay on the hunt so stay tuned thank you guys for uh, for watching this video and all the other videos in this series and if you want to uh, check out any of the Bucks gear uh, that I'm wearing or check out any of the new stuff. I'll leave a link down below and you can use uh, my promo code as well. Uh, it's in the description. You guys can save 10% off that site uh, anytime with my promo code. So thanks for tuning in. Hope your arrows are flying straighter than mine and I'll see you on the next one. Well guys, we may need to call an audible.